sarcasm aside, lifeoutside.net is talking about a .NET developer, Kyle, who picked up an open source Java project in the uh, building a project on top of the Google Web Toolkit. And um, he had a lot of uh, pleasant experiences in the Java space. Uh, pleasant and unpleasant experiences. It's, it appears to be a whole new world out there. Yeah, there's Ruby too. Yeah, well, uh, they tried to look for a fitting framework in uh, Ruby and script shop and a lot of uh, environments. And they picked the Google Web Toolkit. Mm -hmm. And his impressions were that development in the Java space is vastly different. Uh, Roya Star is testing outside of .NET, and um, he was pleasantly surprised by how much testing is encouraged in the Java space. Uh, people just, um, every open source project you have, people recommend how to, you test, uh, how to unit test your extensions over it. Yeah, well I guess that uh, some po open source project won't let you commit without unit tests. Yeah, and, and that's great because there is debate in the .NET community if you have to unit test. If there's no such thing in, in the Java space. There's a convention that you unit test because it's good for you. I want to say something about the Java community and unit testing. All yes. two of them. Yes, I've, I've been to a large project consulting and teaching TDD to a bunch of C++ and Java and .NET programmers. And although the Java programmers did know that there is a thing called unit testing because it's built into all their IDEs, they were just as clueless about how to do it properly or wanted to do it just as, as much or just as less as .NET and C++. So uh, because is this because less, of gui less guidance? It's no guidance. They just had it in the tool. It's just like, you know, when Microsoft had active documents. Did you ever use that? What's an active document? Exactly. So that's how they feel about unit testing. There is this unit testing context menu in all the IDEs. I create private accessor? I think that most developers really are clueless about unit testing, uh, even though their culture is might be about unit testing. Uh, except Ruby, maybe, which started out uh, with more uh, unit uh, Ruby in small talk, but Java and .NET, clueless. I guess it's a, I guess it's a PR issue because uh, the minute you call it testing, uh, developers won't want to do that. Uh, I'm not sure that's the case because, in my experience in the Java space, all projects have unit tests, and they all. Yeah, all open source oh. projects, I, I d don't have access into production code of uh, and why is that? commercial companies. I don't know. They, they won't Maybe let me. Maybe they don't trust you. Security that doesn't let me through. Yeah. I don't know why. And other experiences he had, and that ties in strongly with other experiences I had in the Java space, is that tooling is subpar. He had a hard time getting everything working. He had a hard time. Well, he talks about a s missing shortcut from Eclipse. Uh, something trivial like uh, building your project didn't have a shortcut and adding one wasn't ele elementary. You had to install a plugin to get it working. So he couldn't just build his project using a shortcut. Doesn't it uh, come with uh, someone who presses the buttons for him? I don't know. No, you can write a plugin for Eclipse to uh, compile your project, right? You know what? Uh, I love the idea of open source community and everything, but the tooling in the open source community sucks. Uh, most of the time, it's not usable. Uh, the things that you're looking for the most is just not there. Sure, you have to build it, or as Allende likes to say, send me a patch for that. Well, uh, he actually says it, send me a patch for that. But he's much lower. He has much lower expectations in terms of usability of products, uh, and we all do. And especially for unit testing and testing to really catch on, usability has to get better. And I think the whole testing situation. Uh, not for QA, but even for QA, I think. You, you came from a QA background. You can tell me more about usability. But for unit testing, it just sucks. I think that uh, it's not only that the expectations are low for tools. I think it's the expectation from developers to be better. And uh, that's the, the, different, uh, the, the difference between the developer and their tools. Yeah, and uh, wha what uh, one of the commenters on, on the blog post said is that there's a difference between the great tooling in the Microsoft space, which causes you to, hel to have a lot of uh, what you call productivity, but is actually activity. You do a lot of stuff, you have a lot of shortcuts, you play around a lot, and productivity wizards. you get in the, yeah, a lot of wizards and a lot of forms to fill out. 
and productivity you get from actually learning to string solutions together and uh, getting things done. Uh, it really ties into the conversation uh, the three of us had uh, a couple of weeks ago with Uncle Bob Martin. Um, we, confronted, uh, we confronted him with pretty much the same uh, questions about the difference between uh, .NET and Java development and, th and that the uh, experience in getting a comprehensive Java solution from web server to web service uh, hosting and uh, consuming it in the client was much, much harder than in doing it in the .NET space. Yeah, because you need like uh, five, six tools to get started. Yeah, and everything is in XML and you, you need to learn three not tools. Not everything the Apache config file is not XML. And what Uncle Bob said is that learning these things is what gets you productive in the end. That's why you need a better developer to, to help the students. I'm sorry, needing to learn how a car works doesn't make you a better driver unless you are a race car driver. No, but, but, but it does make you a better mechanic. Unless you work in Toyota. Yeah. I, I have a, a new subject that is uh, less controversial. Should we outsource testing to India or other countries uh, so you do everything on the web? That's what a company like U-Test is doing. Have you heard of U-Test? You're talking about testing, not unit testing, right? U-Test. Not you talking about testing. No, no. U-Test. The testing we are outsourcing. Any kind of testing, it's like, like web testing. Um, so a company like U-Test, what they do, they tell you, hey, you're a company, you don't need any fancy QA department, you developers don't need to do any testing, just uh, create a PayPal account and come to us and we will take your application and we will ship it to hundreds of developers just willing to test your application. And so, so I think that's an amazingly not so good idea. <laughs> uh, the fact is that the company is I think five years old, something like that even more. And they're still, three? They're still running. They're still in business, which is really... Uh, I'm sorry to barge in on the general uh, being pleased with yourselves-ness. Um, I think it's not such a bad idea. It depends on the application. Yeah, it depends on the level of testing first because it's good for system tests. And if y this company can generate uh, convincing software test plans and so convincing software test details and you can manage them, if you have the proper project management in your company and you can uh, make sure they're doing the right work, delivering on time and doing uh, quality testing, heck, if it's cheaper, just do it. Well, and uh, we have to remember that testing, not unit testing, is uh, while well, the user trying to use your application. And I guess that uh, complete strangers from uh, somewhere, somewhere abroad are just as good as uh, any in-house tester, perhaps better. But for good testing to happen, you need to have good communication with the development team about the scenarios that need to be tested. You need to understand what the application is supposed to be doing. In what no, you don't exactly get to talk the now. the quality, the QA and the <laughs> developers are as very good uh, communication. Usually it's, you have a bug. No, I don't. Oh, so, so everything is 